When British Railways was formed in 1948, it inherited four disparate lines of development from its four constituent railways, the Great Western, Southern, LMS, and LNER railways. The prevailing wisdom was that the future lay with electrification, so steam locomotives became a short-term measure, and the most important design philosophy to be adopted was that of simplicity and ease of maintenance. Of 999 locomotives built to British Railways design, 998 had only two outside cylinders, with all their drive gear exposed. The exception was the three-cylinder Duke of Gloucester, the ultimate British Express passenger locomotive, which opens our programme. British Railway's first chief mechanical engineer, or locomotive designer, was Robin Riddles. He'd served his apprenticeship and built a career with the London Midland and Scottish Railway under Sir William Stanier and H.G. Ivert. His official title was Member of the Railway Executive for Mechanical and Electrical Engineering, which avoided any problems of etiquette and personal affront to the former chief mechanical engineers of the four pre-nationalisation companies. However, it was very obvious that the design philosophy was based on that of the London Midland and Scottish Railway, or LMS. The LMS had announced a programme of eight standard steam locomotives to cover all traffic needs in 1947, its last year of independence. Riddles expanded that to 12, the first of which was the 70,000 class, or Britannias. These machines were the first British Pacifics, or 462 locomotives, to be classified as mixed traffic, at home equally on passenger or freight duties, as seen here. Incidentally, Oliver Bullitt of the Southern Railway had described his specifics as mixed traffic, but this was merely a ruse to allow the building of express passenger locomotives in wartime. The Britannias were built from 1951 to 1954 and numbered 55 in total. The first batch of 15 was for use on the Eastern region whose great eastern section was in desperate need of modern motive power, having last had express locomotives of the 460 type in the early 1930s. Fifteen more went to the western region, whose designs had not really progressed since the 1920s, a further ten to the eastern region, and ten to the Midland, with five going to Scotland. Eventually, they all ended up on the Midland region, somewhat appropriate in view of their design lineage. Their names reflected their original owning regions. Polar Star was one of the Western Region batch, carrying a name from one of Churchward's famous 4000 class, or Stars. Here she's working on the former LNWR West Coast Main Line. The only major variations in the appearance of the Britannias were in the tenders fitted. This is one of the final batch, attached to a large BR1D tender. This had side sheets with a continuous form as opposed to the inset coal bunkers of the earlier locomotive scene. Only the last ten engines had this form of tender. These engines are seen at Crew Locomotive Shed. All were built at the famous LMS Crew Works. This was a former Scottish region Pacific, the last built. The first built survives today, and in 1991 returned to its birthplace to work once again on British Rail's main lines. Number 70,000 Britannia was seen on a test run to assess its suitability to work on enthusiast specials just over 30 years after it was built in 1951.
Arrival at Shrewsbury gives the opportunity of studying the Britannia outline at leisure. With two outside cylinders, the frontal aspect is very simple. One of the few modifications to the original design was the large footstep seen here above the lower headlamp. The small oval plug gives the shed allocation and bears the letters SC for self-cleaning the smoke box, part of the plan to eliminate labor-intensive work. This engine also sports modified smoke deflectors, the large steel plates at the sides of the smoke box. The original design included handrails, but after an accident in which these helped to obscure the driver's view, according to the report, they were replaced by cut-out handholds. The loud clanking noise led to some remedial work, but Britannia was passed for mainline work and is next seen on her second run over the celebrated Settle and Carlisle line and then through Wiltshire Tunnel as she approached Blackburn. Restoration to mainline condition was undertaken at Carnforth in Lancashire, a preserved former LMS steam shed. Here Britannia was lined up next to the unique 71,000 Duke of Gloucester, which sports the original handrails. The Duke wasn't part of the original standard scheme, but was a one-off order for a replacement class 8B Pacific. Number 46202 Princess Anne was destroyed in the fatal accident at Harrow in 1952. The BR Pacific was unique and proved to be the last design of steam engine in the United Kingdom. It incorporated many of the final advances, such as a double chimney, caprotti valve gear and roller bearings. However, it wasn't perfect as built and was not fully developed. Through a series of lucky chances, it came to be preserved and has now been subjected to the development program it should have had when new. It's now probably the most advanced British steam locomotive ever. When the end of steam came in 1968, the solitary 8P was sold for scrap, although its cylinders were removed and displayed at the Science Museum. Through chance, it ended up at Woodham Scrapyard in South Wales and came to be preserved. This was deemed to be a project impossible as it had no mechanical parts. A supreme effort by the Owning Society led to full restoration, and in 1990, it was admitted to the charmed circle of approved mainline engines and works once again on BR metals. The culmination of these efforts allowed the society to test their theories that its in-service reputation of being a poor steamer was due to design faults which a program of development would eliminate. The Settle and Carlisle Railway has proved to be the perfect test ground with its long gradients, where steam locomotives have to work as hard or harder today than in the days of steam. Modifications were to prove successful, and in July 1991, the locomotive broke the all-time record for the southbound climb on the long drag, as the Settle and Carlisle is known. This is that run.
Least successful of the BR Pacifics were the Class VI clans numbered in the 72,000 series. Only 10 were built, and they were all allegated to Scotland, and one was caught hiding at the back of the shed at Stranra. They were a smaller boiled version of the Britannias. Far more successful was the Class V, 460. This class, the 73,000, was a cosmetically modified version of Sir William Stanier's celebrated LMS Black Fives. 151 were built, allocated to all regions, where they were universally accepted and used for all types of traffic. The first two we see are on the southern region, illustrating the varied tasks carried out. The southern had 24 of them, which replaced elderly 460s of pre-grouping design. There was only one major variant in the Class Fives. 30 were fitted with a similar Caprotti valve gear to that found on Duke of Gloucester. These were split between the Western, Midland and Scottish regions. One of the Caprotti engines is seen heading for Perth. The Southern Region engines appropriately headed inter-regional workings to the Western Region, as seen here at Oxford, where 73070 has just arrived. This engine originally ran on the Midland region and was built in 1953. This serves to emphasize the standard aspect of the BR classes, as they were able to be transferred around the country as required, a policy it was not possible to adopt for the individual railway's locomotives, as spares and maintenance schedules varied from one railway to another. With the standards, all these items were standardized as well. The class fives, had the same six foot two inch driving wheels as the Britannias, the Duke of Gloucester and the clans. Cabs and tenders were identical as well. So it was simple for drivers from different regions to climb aboard and find there was no familiarization needed. These trains had previously had to have engine and crew changes at Oxford, together with expensive pilot men in some cases. A Western man could now simply take over from a Southern man and vice versa. A few survive. One of the southern engines, 73050, is now named City of Peterborough and is seen on a royal working on the Neen Valley Railway as its extension was opened by Prince Edward. There were no 74,000s. The next class was the 75,000 Class 4, 460. These were smaller in all respects than the Class 5s. 80 were built, all at Swindon. 45 went to the Midland, 20 to the Western, and 15 to the Southern. The latter had larger BR-1B tenders, as the Southern region had no water troughs, and locomotives consequently needed greater water capacity. Both southern and western allocated engines underwent some modifications, notably in the fitment of double chimneys, as seen on the engine which has a Pyrrhic victory over an electric suburban unit. These engines were mixed traffic. The smaller type BR2 tender is seen on this Midland region allocated engine running under the wires south of Crewe. The Western's engines became well known on the secondary routes in mid Wales, such as the Cambrian main line. Here, one of them is seen climbing to the east along the River Dovey Valley to Shrewsbury. The train is the Cambrian Coast Express, which was formerly associated with the famous Great Western Manor class. The BR4s were similar in power output, weight, and route availability. All were painted in the BR secondary locomotive livery of black, lined out with red, cream, and gray. However, in the late 1950s, the western and southern regions painted some of their engines in the express passenger line green livery, which suited them well. Here, one of the original Midland allocation, which retained its black livery to the end, is seen on the final stages of the climb to Tullerthic in central Wales, a feat which was to be repeated in 1991. 
The locomotives were not too successful, for no apparent reason, but they served their time to the end of steam. As mentioned earlier, both western and southern regions modified some of their engines with double chimneys, and in 1991, it was one of the latter which was to be seen climbing to Telerthic, this time more successfully than the engine seen in 1965. The engine was 75069, now preserved on the Severn Valley Railway, and it was used on two Barmouth to Shrewsbury excursions known as the Cambrian Limited. The train evoked memories of the 50s and 60s as it left the seaside town and crossed the wooden viaduct across the head of the harbour at Barmouth. The train had been brought to the coast by Great Western Manor Class 7819 Hinton Manor. The first test of the engine's steaming ability comes immediately outside Barmouth and Fairbourne as it climbs along the cliff face at Friog, passing through an avalanche shelter as it does so. The steaming abilities of the engine were in no doubt as it left McConflict to climb to Telerthic. It cut seven minutes from the schedule and reached the top at 32 miles an hour. When the manor tried the same feat later in the year, it was unable to compete. Perhaps the reputation of the fours was unfair. The original design of the BR4s is clearly seen on the Bluebell Railway, where 75027 was filmed on a freight train. This ex-Western region engine spent its last years on the erstwhile Somerset and Dorset Railway.
The Bluebell also boasts the tank engine version of the Class 4s, number 80064. Here the pair ascend Freshfield Bank, enabling a comparison to be made. The first double chimney conversion was carried out on the Western Region's number 75029, and this engine was purchased out of BR service by the well-known wildlife and railway artist David Shepherd. Today it works in Somerset near Shepton Mallet on the East Somerset Railway. At Cranmore Station, the old signal box has been converted into an art gallery to display David Shepherd's works. He's named the locomotive the Green Knight, subsequent to purchasing it. None of the fours carried names in BR service. Note the inset coal bunker of the BR2 tender, which is very useful on preserved lines where there's as much tender first as smoke box first running. The morning mist captures the northern atmosphere as number 75078 leaves Berry with the first train of the day, a timeless scene. BR produced two types of class 4 tender engines. Both types are seen here, as a 76,000 class mogul accompanies 75078 off shed. Remaining with the 460 for the moment, it's worth noting that this is another ex-southern region double chimneyed large tendered variant, which is normally resident on the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. On this occasion it was on loan to the East Lancashire Railway. The 76,000 Mogul is a permanent East Lancashire machine. 115 of these smaller Class 4 engines were produced from 1952 to 1957. They were truly mixed traffic, working all types of trains. Only the Western region failed to have any allocated. 76079 was built only a few miles from its present home at Horwich in 1957. It was allocated to the Midland region.
Down south in the winter of 1991, we see 76017 on the mid Hans railway. This is also a local engine, being one of the second batch of 15 machines produced in 1952 at Horwich. It was allocated to the southern region and so is at home in mid Hampshire. These moguls were probably the least original of the BR locomotives, being essentially a tidied up version of the LMS Ivert class 4 moguls. The batch allocated to the southern region is perhaps the best known, as they were used to replace many elderly 440 types inherited from the southern's constituent companies. 76019 and its 14 sisters were allocated to Eastleigh Depot and performed over the many secondary main and cross country lines in the district, including the Mid Hans line. It too has not strayed from its original hunting grounds. These could be seen from the 1950s or 1960s. Although a number of standard class 4260s have been preserved, only two have been restored to working condition. All the same, a third engine, 76031, was seen in the summer of 1991 on the East Lancashire Railway. This renumbering was to celebrate one of the Eastern Region's allocation at a time when an ex Great Eastern Railway Class N7 was visiting the railway. We now go back a quarter of a century to see the real 76031 at work on an excursion on the Southern Region. The variety of work provided by the Southern is well seen here, as one of the second batch to be allocated to the region, number 76026, acts as pilot to a standard class five on the climb out of Weymouth through Binkham Tunnel on the main Waterloo to Weymouth line. The general outline of these neat little machines is well shown by 76029 heading an engineer's breakdown crane and ballast train at Basingstoke in 1965. This is followed by a Midland region locomotive heading south 
with a parcels train the previous year. We return south to see one of the later southern engines fitted with the larger BR-1B type tender, which threatens to overwhelm the engine. This was the only variation in outline for the class and was fitted to 17 locomotives, numbers 76053 to 69. Many were allocated to the north, both to Scotland and to the northeastern region at Gateshead and Darlington. The latter's allocation became well known for their use on the Trans-Pennine freight trains, which traversed the high country from Barnard Castle to Kirby Stephen via Stainmore and required banking assistance, normally by the smaller BR standards Class 3 and 2 moguls. The Class 3 engines, or 77,000s, of which 20 were built, were split equally between the northeastern and Scottish regions. At the end of steam, however, in 1967, number 77014 somehow found its way to the southern region to haul a rail tour, which is seen here. The engine remained on the southern until the end of steam in the region in July 1967. Sadly, none was preserved. This was probably the least necessary BR standard class after the clans, as it was very little smaller than the class four moguls and very little larger than the class twos. Its raison d'etre was its lighter axle loading than class fours, enabling the class threes to run over secondary lines with a 16 ton axle loading limitation. The chassis was the same as the class fours with a smaller boiler, derived from the Great Western standard number two boiler design. There were 65 engines in the smallest BR Mogul class, the 78,000s, or class 2, 260s. These were a direct continuation of the LMS Ivert design of class 2 Mogul, very slightly tidied up, most notably at the front end, where they had a joining piece between the front and side foot plates looking a little less naked. The Western had the first 10, used on the Cambrian and cross-country routes, such as that through the Cotswolds from Cheltenham to Kingham. The Midland had 35, Scotland 10, and the North Eastern also had 10, most of which were used on the Stainforth line and branches radiating from Darlington. The BR standard range also included three different types of tank engine. The largest was the Class 4 264 tank, which was a direct development of the LMS post-war design by Fairburn. A number of the latter were originally built for the southern region in early BR days, but they were rapidly replaced by the standard locomotives, which proved to be very effective. Originally, 20 of them were allocated to the southern, although many more were later transferred in from other regions. Each standard design was assigned to a parent design office, and the Class 4 tanks were designed at Brighton, whose works also built all but 25 of the 155 engines in the class. Derby built the first 10 plus five others, whilst Doncaster built the remaining 10. These views show one of the final Brighton batch at work on rail tours around London in the last months of steam in 1967. Number 8039 emerged from Brighton in 1952, and started its career on the Midland region, although it was transferred to the southern in the early 60s, where it was allocated to Exmouth Junction Shed to take over duties in the southwest from the remaining M7 tanks and Maudsell moguls. The last member of the class was number 8154, the last steam engine built at Brighton Works in 1957. This spent its entire career on the southern region and is seen in the mist on yet another of the rail tours of the last days of steam. Although the big tanks were classified four, without a P for passenger or F for freight designation, they were seldom used on freight work, as tank engines were inherently less effective for loose coupled goods work due to their inferior braking capacity by comparison with tender engines. 
they were inevitable candidates for preservation. Number 80079 has seen it work on the southern region and then more recently on the Severn Valley Railway, where it was one of the stalwarts throughout the 1980s. Curiously, two consecutively numbered engines have been preserved and have both worked on the main lines. Number 80080 has seen service from the north to the south, one of the most widely travelled of the main line approved engines. This engine is based at Butterley in the East Midlands, just north of Derby has done a considerable amount of work in its local area. one of the many locomotives who have been rescued by enthusiasts from Woodham Brothers Scrapyard at Barry in South Wales, without whom there would have been a much smaller railway preservation movement than exists today. Woodham's bought many steam engines from British Railways at the end of steam, but failed to cut them up for scrap. More than 200 stood in the open on Barry Island in South Wales for up to 20 years, and all but a handful were bought for restoration. In the autumn of 1991, 8080, paid a nostalgic visit to its former home as part of the celebrations of 150 years of the Tough Vale Railway. Four of these locomotives have been in constant use in the 1980s on preserved railways. 1953 built number 80064 was originally restored and used on the Dart Valley Railway's Torbay line in the 1970s, but was transferred to the Bluebell in Sussex. This was originally a Midland engine which finished its active days in the south. This engine is finished in the standard livery for the class, lined black with the early BR emblem. None of the class was allocated to the western region, so none of them was painted in lime green in BR days. However, one of them has since acquired that livery, and it suits it very well. Number 80135 works on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway.
we return to Waterloo to see an example of the intermediate class of British Railway standard tanks, the Class 3 262s. This was a tank engine version of the Class 3 260s, designed and built at Swindon. There were rather more of these, 45 in total, than there were of the tender engines. Not surprisingly, the Western had the larger number of the Class 27, whilst 14 went to the Southern and four went to the Northeastern for use on the Stainforth route, like the tender engines, ending their careers around Scarborough. Number 82029 of this batch was the last survivor, and none of them has been preserved. The Class II 262 tanks, like the Class II moguls, were a direct continuation of the Ivert design for the LMS. 30 were built, 20 for the Midland and 10 for the Southern. All were fitted with vacuum control equipment to allow them to run in push-pull formations, trains where the locomotive could be controlled from a remote cab located in a suitably equipped coach. Many were used on the lines in northwest Wales, radiating from their place of construction crew. They gained some local fame as they worked a named train, the Welsh Dragon, which was merely a push-pull local train graced with a name. These engines went about their duties without attracting much attention although they occasionally featured on enthusiast tours, as did 84006 in 1958, when it was used for a tour of the Birmingham suburbs by the Stevenson Locomotive Society. The Southern Regions batch of 10 was built in 1957, but they only spent a few years on the region, in the Kent area, before electrification made them redundant, resulting in their transfer to the Midland. One of the original Midland batch is seen at Leicester Central, as it prepares to take a train out to the north. These engines had replaced earlier tank engine classes, such as the former London Tilbury and South End Atlantic tanks in the Leicester and Rutland areas. It was local passenger duties such as these that were the first victims of modernization or rationalization by Dr. Peaching. So this was the first class of BR standards to be eliminated. The first number, 84012, being condemned in 1963, and the last, 84028, in 1965 none have been preserved. The BR Standards number series included two types of freight engine which weren't built for or by British Railways. They were, however, designed by Mr. Riddles and were a universal design for use by all railways. They were known as the austerity classes as they were designed and built during the Second World War to be as cheap as possible. Two variations existed. The smaller version had eight coupled wheels and the larger ten. Many of them were shipped overseas during the war or were used by the military in the UK, especially the 10-coupled engines. None were preserved, except for one used by the army at Longmoor in Hampshire. But two more, together with an American wartime design, were brought back from Greece in the 1980s to work once again in the UK. The American locomotive and one of the Riddle's 210s now works on the mid Hans Railway in the Longmoor Military Railway livery of Royal Blue. The second 210 has been named Dame Vera Lynn and works on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway in a variation on British Railway's express passenger green livery. The austerity 210s worked in Scotland, as seen here at Grangemouth, but they weren't British Railway's only 210s. The final type of standard design was the Class 9F, or 92,000, heavy freight engines. These are generally reckoned to have been the outstanding design of the standard classes. Originally, it was intended to produce an eight-coupled freight engine of the 282, or Mercado, type. This would have been a Britannia with a different chassis. Riddle's experience with the austerity 210s convinced him that maximum adhesion and braking capacity was needed. 
The result was an entirely new design with a slightly smaller boiler than the Britannia's, which enabled it to be pitched sufficiently high in the frame to allow five-foot diameter driving wheels to fit beneath the firebox. 251 of these engines were built, spread between the Western, Midland and Eastern regions. Variations included a bizarre experiment with a double boiled batch of 10 using the Italian Crosti formula. These were a failure and converted to conventional form and as such lasted to the end of steam. The locomotives were perhaps best known for their use on the Great Central Route, where they covered most freight duties in its later years, as illustrated here at Leicester and Belgrave and Birdstall. This is now the Leicester terminus of the preserved Great Central Railway. This train illustrates the 9F's main work, heavy mineral freights. These are empties travelling northwards to the Nottinghamshire coalfields. The trains were known as the Annesley Cutters and ran from the Nottingham area to Woodford Hulse, an isolated railway community in the wilds of Buckinghamshire, where the mineral wagons were re-marshalled and distributed to destinations across the south of England. The 9Fs were very versatile. Despite their freight classification and small driving wheels, they were used on passenger duties on the Great Central during the summer months and were reliably clocked at speeds in excess of 90 miles an hour. When steam ended, two were preserved directly out of service, the first being 92203, bought by David Shepherd for use in the East Somerset Railway and named Black Prince by the artist. In the early 1970s, this engine was also used on passenger work when it ran a number of rail tours from its temporary home at Eastleigh before transfer to the East Somerset Railway, where it's remained ever since. Further 9Fs have been preserved by a purchase from Woodhams at Barry. The first of these to be restored to working order is 92240 on the Bluebell Railway, which is seen on its rededication day in September 1990. From above, the main variations in 9F design can be clearly seen. The original members of the class had single chimneys and inset coal bunkers on their tenders. Later engines, such as this one, had double chimneys. The final 9F, also preserved directly out of service, is Evening Star, seen here on an excursion from Scarborough to York. was the very last steam engine built for British Railways at Swindon in 1960. This was commemorated by naming the engine the only one of the class to bear a name in BR days and painting it in the express passenger green livery topped off with the classic Swindon trademark of a copper cap chimney. The engine has had a notable preservation career, already three times longer than its service career. 
One of the highlights was a visit to the North Yorkshire Moors Railway in October 1987, when it worked through trains from Whitby on BR tracks onto the Moors Line. Here, the engine is seen at the top of the severe gradient at 1 in 49 from Grossmont to Gothland. Hardly a test at all for such a powerful machine. Naturally, such an historically important machine as British Railway's last steam locomotive remains the property of the nation and is in the custody of the National Railway Museum at York, where the history of Britain's railways is preserved and on display. The museum owns many steam locomotives from the earliest days to Evening Star and is very well worth visiting by anyone with an interest in railways. We hope this programme has whetted your appetite. <laughs>